I haven't even been able to get out of the book of Genesis. I haven't even been able to get past, you know, like verse 4. But today we're going to look at the end of Genesis chapter 1 and the beginning of Genesis chapter 2. Okay? So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We honor you. Thank you for your presence, for it is so good. We thank you and we honor you. Let your word be understood today. Let our ears be open to hear and our hearts be ready to receive. We take authority over the atmosphere around us, the sky above us, and the ground that we stand on. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come forth and reveal to us what you have for us to share and to hear. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 31. And today is my conclusion of the series, Start With God. Today I'm going to talk about God rested. God rested. You think, really, God rested? I mean, think about it. Who here thinks that God ever gets tired? Do, does God get tired? Then why does God say he rested? You know, people read that. For me, when I read the Bible, it's, 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 uh, it's not, for me, when I read the Bible, I ask questions. Whenever you're reading the word of God, begin to ask questions. You know, does it make sense to you that God who created the heavens and earth, that he was tired, that he had to rest? Think about it. Does God need rest? He shouldn't, right? Then there has to be a meaning of what God means that on the sixth day after he created, on the seventh day, he rested. Why would God, who doesn't need sleep, who is a spirit okay, would ever be tired to rest. And so there has to be a deeper understanding of what he was saying. Look at verse 1, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. It says this, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Did you know that after one, two, three, four, five days, that God created everything. On the sixth day, he created you and me or mankind. But you know what? On the days from one to five, he looked at it and he says, it is good. But on the sixth day, when he looked at his creation of everything he created, he looked on the sixth day and he says, he looked at everything. He says, it is very good. See, God says that of the, all of the trees and the animals and the things that he created on the planet, Oh, she doesn't bother me. Don't worry about it. Um, that everything was good, but when it came to the sixth day, he said it was very good. Let me give you a little bit of what it means to be very good. That word very means abundant. It means uh, exceeding. It means extreme. It means abounding. That word good is, means valuable of high price. So when God says that he created everything, on the sixth day he created man and he looked at everything and he says that uh, all the other days he said it was good, but on the sixth day he said it was very good, that means it, everything is only very good when man is involved. See, things cannot be very good if you're not there. Oh, come on somebody. Things cannot be very good, husbands, if you're not with your wife. See, it's good to go work. It's good to make money. It's good to provide. But if you're not in your family's life, it's not very good. Now, see, I'm, I'm going to help you get a deeper understanding. All right? So when God created everything, he said it was good. But when the sixth day he created man, he looked at everything, he said it was very good. It cannot be very good without man. It cannot be very good if you're not there. Mothers, your children need you. If you're not in their life, it's good that you make money and provide and cook and do these things. But if you don't have a relationship with them, it's not very good. It's just good, but it's not 
exceedingly good. It's not abundantly good. It's not extremely very valuable. It's just good. And good is good, but it's not very good. Who likes very good over good? If you had a choice, who liked very good? See, I've never met a man or a woman, and I asked them a question, do you like to have, uh, do you like to have just an okay marriage? They're like, well, not really. I said, do, do you want to have a good marriage? Said, yeah. I said, how about a very good marriage? Yeah, I want a very good marriage. Right? Nobody wants just a good marriage if you can have a very good marriage. To, to, right? Who wants, you know, it's like this. If you had a choice of a good car and a very good car, which would you choose? A very good car. Right? Because having a, everybody knows, and, and people was like, well, how do you know the difference? Did you know that you never have to explain to somebody what is the difference between good and very good? You, you know what? People just know. They just know when they know. It's just something in us that tells us we know the difference between good and very good. We, well, you know, uh, you meet people and you would say, wow, that's a good, you know what, that's a very good person. Right? And then how do you explain it? You just know. Why? Is the only way you can know something's very good is you're involved in it. See, I, I ask you, who wants to have a, great, a good church? Yes? Who wants to have a very good church? Some of us just like, I don't know, I just, uh, we in church? <laughs> okay. Then guess what? It cannot be very good unless you're there. It cannot be very good unless man or woman is part of it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end with something. But So when God said on the sixth day he looked at everything, he said, man, all the things I made is good, but it can't be very good unless man is involved, unless my image is involved. And so when you are involved in something, it means that God's image, which you were created in, is involved in it. And so whenever you become a blessing, people go, you know what? I am so happy that you're here because you make everything better. Because you are very good at what you do. Very good at what you do. You know, I can do some things that's pretty good, but there's some people that can do it very good. You know, I can sing a little bit, but I'm not very good. Right? Nobody's going to buy CDs to hear me sing. <laughs> but some of you are very good at it. Some of you are creative, but you're very creative. The same thing that I see, you see in a whole different way. Because why? But you cannot use what you got until you get involved so that God can take that out of you and apply it to something. So that's the first thing I want for you to understand is that when God made man, he made him on the sixth day. Everything else he made, he said it was good. But on the sixth day, it was very good. Because his image now, his, his representation, you know, uh, uh, every father wants his kids to be involved in what he's doing. You know, it's like the family business. You know, every father. You know, I know preachers that's like, they have three generations of pastors. Or they have, you know, even their grandkids are now pastors. And they're like, wow, they're, they become very, because they want that. You know, you see fathers and mothers that have uh, businesses and they become into that. And they're like, wow, it's very interesting because you see how much better that business becomes. And so God always want you to be involved because when you're involved, it's very good. The, uh, another thing is when he, the word made there is to produce, to appoint, to ordain. So when he looked on the sixth day and he made man in his image, that image he made means that it was ordained for you to be who you are. Okay, so that means that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, God has ordained it because the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by God. In some way, if you have given your life over to God, that means God's going to begin to direct you. 
Do you know you're not here by accident today? Some of you might not even want to be here. I understand that. You know, I have children. I understand that. You know, and, and, but yet God has gotten you here, and that's not by accident. Because God has ordained you or made you or appointed you for that. Now, I want to talk to you. Look, go with me to Genesis chapter 2. Okay? Thus the heavens, and verse 1 to 3, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And this is what really got me. Why would God need rest? I mean, it just, he's gone. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested. Here it is again. From all his work which he had created and made. Have you ever wondered when you read that? Have you ever just wondered and say, God rested? I mean, he got tired? You know, you know, Đức Chúa Trời phải nghỉ sao? Mệt mà phải nghỉ nữa hả? No. Yes, but it said rested. You know what this word rested means? In Hebrew, it means the word sabbat, which is the word we get for Sabbath, right? Everybody know on the Sabbath day. But look at what this word means, okay? Uh, are you ready? It means to rest, cease, to end something, like to end something, to stop doing something, to rest from something. But look at this. This word means to celebrate. And so when God rested on the seventh day, he was celebrating what he had created. He was celebrating that he created the heavens and the earth. He was celebrating that he created the animals and the sky and the stars and the planets. He was celebrating, but most of all, he was celebrating his creation of his son, his children. That he was celebrating to say, look, when I have ceased from what I'm doing, that means I am going to celebrate and watch my children carry out the work that I began. When God created, everybody look outside, you see the tree? You see the tree? You know that God quit making the tree, but it's still going. Right? But he put inside that tree a seed that forever that tree will grow. But it takes a man to be able to move that tree to where he wants it to grow. You know, my wife and I, when we first moved in our home, we went through three, I mean, let me see, two, we went through six oak trees. I couldn't keep it going. Every time I finally had the last oak tree, that means I had two each. So each of my, I had three on each side. So that means I went through six of them. They kept dying. So the last oak tree, I was so mad. I, we put it in the ground. I know this sounds silly. I said, Lord, I put my hand on the tree and said, grow. You are going to grow and live and not die. And you know what? It grew. And we got big oak trees in the front of our house. I mean, I got tired. It's expensive to get a tree. Have you ever bought an oak tree? It's expensive. Okay? So what God created you to continue the work. That's why whenever you do what you do, God begins to celebrate. When we come on the Sabbath day, it represents that God is going to remind you through his word that he created you in his image. And if he's created you in his image, and then what he has put in you, you are capable to carry on that work. That's why we went through and took the, the personality to know how and your likes and your dislikes. Some of you are, are very creative. Some of you are very administrative. Uh, some of you can put things together, right? Some of you are very good at decorating, right? Let me tell you, I was telling my mom 
This week, my wife and I had lunch uh, with uh, Bishop Holly and a couple of pastors from Illinois. So they took me to this place, okay? It's called, <laughs> honest to God, they call it, what is it, the Antique Gallery, all right? And I walked in, and I looked around, and these people, you know the old picket fences around your house? You know, and they get old, and then they change them, right? They get new ones, right? The old picket, and it's brown, and it's gray. These people take these old picket fences and begin to make shelving out of them and picture frame and sell them for $30 a piece. And I thought to myself, what? I just changed my fence into my backyard. And these men take the trash and build birdhouses and shelving and sell them for $15, $20, $30, $50 dollars a piece. And I thought to myself, how can you be that creative? I told my sister Amanda, and she said, I know there's some people like that. That is true what they say. A man, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I was shocked. I was shocked. And I told, I, I told Bishop, I said, Bishop, I had a whole back fence. He goes, why didn't you call me? I would have came and got that old fence. I said, what would you do with it? He goes, I would have made a shelf. Look, they're selling this thing for $100. This woman took an old piece of wood, right? She put some metal wheels on it, and she sold it for $375. And they asked her, do you have any more? And it's the wood she found somewhere. I was just unbelievable. Ask Lou if I'm lying. There's this lady that took old fence. She, she just nailed it together and took stencils and drew flowers on it and sold it $30. And I'm like, how come I'm not thinking like that? You know why? God didn't make me like that. All right? So all of us, God rested from what he's doing is because he wants you to continue his work. Whatever you're good at, continue the work. Continue to do it. Continue to do it. There's some of you that love that creativity. There's some of you that get a, a kick out of putting things together and putting envelopes together, right, Lon? Um, putting things and, get a, and having fun doing it, okay? That's not my idea of fun, but that's their idea. There are some of you that can do things. That's why when God says he rested, it represents that I want to sit back like this. I want to sit back and celebrate and watch my children carry out my work. Do you understand that? You know, this oak tree was not here originally. Some, that means a person had to put it here. Okay? That means whatever God has created, he created for you and me. And when he said he rested, yes, he stopped doing certain things. But he represents, he celebrated. Can I tell you like this? God is not going to do things for you that you can do. He will only do what you cannot do. Listen to what I'm saying. God is not going to do something that you can do. He, can only, he will only do what you cannot do. And so, you know, like, can God do everything? Anything? Yeah. He's not going to come down and brush my teeth for me. He's not going to put my clothes on. Right? He's not going to cut my own hair. No. God's not going to drive me from my house to the church. Because that's what I can do. See, God is only going to do what you and I cannot do. Do you understand? Remember the story in the Bible? There's a story where there's a bunch of 5,000 people were hungry. And the, the Jesus says, will y'all give him something to eat? And what did the disciples say? Lord, we got nothing. We have nothing. Um, a year's wage won't even have enough food to buy money. I mean, a year's wage won't be enough to feed these 5,000 men. And then there was women and children. And you know what the Lord says? He said, what do you have? And he says, well, this little boy over here, he only has two fish and five loaves of bread. 
Give it to him. See, sometimes we think we need to have a lot. But God says that you give me what you can do. And I'm going to give you what you cannot do. See, we always waiting. Oh, God, I'm not smart enough. I don't, I, I don't know enough. Uh, I'm scared. I'm all these things. God says, what can you do? You know, it's not easy to come up here and give announcements and take offering. You know that, right? Some people are shaking in their, their, their shoes. Like, uh, what, they're, they're going to look at me. Right? But you know what? Do what you can do. And let God do what you cannot do. And the story is, that little boy, the disciple says, I only have five loaves of bread and two fish. And God, and he says, give them here. And when you put it in the hand of Jesus, he was able to feed 5,000 men and have 12 baskets left over. Think about it for a minute. Five loaves and two bread and you got 12 baskets and you fed people a fish buffet? They had a fish sandwich buffet, all you can eat. Everybody like all you can eat, right? That a fish sandwich buffet. We call it fish filet instead of chick filet, right? So you got that. Look, the reason why God rested was he wanted to celebrate your accomplishments. He wanted to say, that's my girl. That's my boy. You can do it. You can have a very good marriage. You can have a very good church. You can have a very good career. You can have a very good ministry. You can have a very good voice. You've got to develop your voice. Do what you're supposed to do, and God will do what you cannot do. Look, I don't know how to do all this. But you know what? I know God has my back. You know what? All I can do is come. And so, look, brothers and sisters, it cannot be very good if you're not here. If you're not involved in people's lives, it can't be. It could be good. Their life is good. But their life is very good if you're in it. Because you bring the image of God. Daniel, you know what? It's so happy to see you. You know, because why? Your presence makes life very good. You are very good. Did you know that a picture is not beautiful unless people look at it? Right? A painter paints a picture and he said, yeah, that's a good painting. But when people look at it and say, wow. I really like it becomes very good so the things that are in you that God has placed in you it's good but it cannot be very good and still you until you begin to use it until you begin to get involved until you begin to say God you are resting because you want to celebrate and see how I do things how I use the things that you have given me because then it becomes very good you know, in, I was just thinking of a couple of things in Vietnamese. Nhiều điều rất là, nhiều điều trong đời sống mình tốt. Mà nếu mà muốn tốt hơn, mình phải nhúng tay vào. Mình, cái, 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 mình phải có phần trong cái việc đó nó mới rất là tốt. For things to be good, it's all right. Because everything God made is good. But to things to be very good, you have to be involved. You have to be part. And look, don't look around and say, look, this is not, it's God. I know this is different, but God wants you to be involved. And we've been talking about how to get involved. God rested because he's, he doesn't want to do it anymore. Not, you know what? He's given you everything to do. So he's given you the power. In the very first week of January, we talked about begin everything with God, right? The first four letters of, uh, the first four words of the Bible is in the beginning God. Then I spoke about the second week, about being creative. The fifth word of the whole Bible begins with in the beginning God created. That word created means to make something out of nothing. Okay, I don't care what people say, no chimpanzee, no monkey can make a space shuttle to go to, go to the, the moon. I'm sorry, that's never going to happen. It's because why? It can only happen because we were created in God's image. 
True? And then last week, I spoke about be the light. Begin, start with God and you be the light. Go and start a, a, a cell group, a life group, something. You know, if you like to take photography, start a photography interest group. You know how many people right now have a digital camera, very expensive, don't know how to use? It's true. All those little functions, they don't know. But what if you start one and begin to bless them with your talent and show them? And then start winning people. Do it as a service to people. What about that? How about doing that? There's some of us that can't cook very well. I can, that's me right here. There's some of us that can't, don't know style, right? Men like us, like me, it's like I'm, I'm most time, I don't even know what goes together. I'll be like wearing green and orange or something. I, I don't know. My kids, my daughter's like, Daddy, no. Okay. Maybe that's what you're good at. But the reason why the Bible says on the seventh day he rested, it was a time to worship the Lord because we come together. But it's also a time of celebration from the things that God has already put you in you and my hand. He wants to celebrate, to see his kids do what he has called them to do. He wants you to walk the path and do the things that he's already put in your hand. Because he's created, in your, he's created you in his image. So begin. It, things cannot be very good unless you're involved. Well, that's deep right there, y'all. God says on the sixth day, everything was very good. Amen. Heavenly Father, can we all stand?